Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. In today's video, we're going to look, take a look at video number three in the e 3 framework series. So this is all about the exponential acceleration of experience. And the first video touched on the whole idea of how, how technology is impacting consumer behavior and evolving experience. The second video was all about the very first pillar of the e 3 framework, which is all about empower where we saw how various technologies are empowering consumers and really focusing on in, um, basically taking and allowing them to own, democratize, create their own experiences and enhance those experiences. Today, we're gonna talk about Enhance. Enhance is all about the intelligent systems that are gonna be fueling this rapid shift and, and, and acceleration tied to some of these experiences. So we're gonna look at all facets of artificial intelligence that's also tied to machine learning as well as deep learning. We're going to look at the evolution of voice-based experiences. We're going to review how I see marketing fundamentally shifting from what was traditionally the four Ps to what I'm calling the new four Ps associated with artificial intelligence. And how all of this is laying the groundwork for how, it's, how our environment is going to eventually evolve. I hope you enjoy the video. So now, now that we've discussed many of the technologies that are eventually going to empower consumers at scale, we're going to begin to discuss technology and intelligent systems that are going to begin to enhance our daily lives. We're going to start with this idea of conversational experiences. So conversational experiences I mentioned previously before, whereas 2016 was definitely the year of the chatbot. You have this mix of, of basically asynchronous and potentially real-time interactions. And again, you have hundreds of potential use cases associated with, uh, with any type of thread. This could be tied to uh, progressive profiling. This could be tied to delivery of content. This could be tied to customer service. So again, a lot of these systems are actually being driven by AI-based entities and sometimes with computer and with computer and human hybrids called Centaur interactions. You know, Facebook's M Messenger really kind of ties into this model. But as we begin to continue to evolve, this is the first foundational step towards having potential agents or proxies working on our behalf. So 2017 was all about voice-based experiences. You know, coming out of the gate with, uh, with Amazon Alexa and CES kind of stealing the show, you look at there are about 35 million US consumers right now that use a voice-based assistant at least once a month. And 70% of the current home-based systems are tied to the Amazon ecosystem. You've got about 23% owning a Google Home unit. But these numbers are a little deceiving because voice-based systems are, go well beyond the home-based devices that, uh, that a lot of us are familiar with. And it's definitely territories that are worth exploring on how we enhance it. You know, from our research perspective, when we looked at you know, what are some of the top asks across generational cohorts, um, a lot of them are potentially tied to weather, so there's opportunities there for day parting and contextual messaging. For Gen Z, Millennials, and Gen X, there's a, there's a heavy, heavy association with music. And for Millennials, Gen X, and Boomers, they're essentially interested in the news and potentially integration of flash briefing in, ter in terms of your messaging there. So when you look at Alexa voice services, many people associate Alexa specifically with Echo. But right now, it's really more about the portability of the voice service. So you have about 15,000 skills right now within the Alexa skill store. You've got, prim they're primarily focused on utility. You know, there's still some, you know, focus on how you can drive sustained engagement across the platform. But essentially, essentially <laughs> Alexa represents about 70% of the current marketplace. And so I was a very kind of early Amazon Alexa uh, partner here. You know, we built uh, 20 or 30 different prototypes and also then we've really focused on, you know, understanding the evolution of voice-based services. So with the Amazon Echo Show, you start seeing the voice plus visual pairing opportunities. And when you start looking again at the research of what Gen Z and millennials actually want, they want to have, um, they want to have a screen to associate with it to drive easier interactions. So it was almost 79 and 90% respectively that want to have some type of pairing in addition to the voice service. Uh, but one of the key things to consider is that it is incredibly important to develop voice first and then append some of the visual elements associated with that. Now, as we think about the portability of Alexa and voice services, 
and you start thinking about the ecosystem. It's not just about the echo form factor. It also goes beyond that into some of the partnerships that they have with IoT device makers as well as, as automobile manufacturers. But then you look at Google and Google Assistant. Google Home is just another output for a connection point for Google Assistant. So Google obviously is using natural language processing. They have their amazingly deep uh, knowledge graph and then plus they're incorporating machine learning into, into the system. So what ends up happening is just like an Alexa skill, you have an opportunity to create what's called a Google action. Now, even though home represents 23% of the current home marketplace, Google Assistant's on over 200 million devices. And one of the core drivers here is that there's no enabling necessary of a skill. Like within Alexa, you have to actually enable the skill. You can actually have a visual text-based inter um, interaction through the assistant application. So it could be similar to a conversational chatbot. But the really key part here is that it's about also then creating and controlling the experience that a consumer may have as they come into contact with a brand across multiple touch points. So the ecosystem tied to Assistant is tied to the iPhone, it's tied to Android, it's tied to Google Home, it's tied to, to Android Wear, it's tied to TV, and it's tied to, to, to Auto. So you think about all the various touch points. And within our research, it actually shows that 50% of the voice queries actually happen in the car. So this whole idea of creation of experiences within Google Assistant and this entire ecosystem is one that's incredibly important to consider because Google Assistant and others are gonna play a very, very key role as you begin to see the bundling of these services. And that's the key point to consider. It's incredibly important to think about not just delivering a specific uh, bot or a skill, but what is the strategy going to be for working through a time whenever we're gonna be marketing to algorithms and not just to people. So this is a very key way of helping to control the experiences. Deep linking that you can deep link into the experience directly supports third-party transactions. So this whole idea of voice-based interfaces and specifically virtual assistants and how to enhance those is an incredibly important one moving forward. So that leads me then into artificial intelligence. Each of the systems that I've touched on previously, specifically with Alexa as well as Google Assistant, are various forms of using natural language processing and machine learning, which are essentially subsets of artificial intelligence. And AI has definitely dominated the headlines this year. It's promising to disrupt every industry from media, advertising, all the way to practicing law and medicine. And also you've had two of the largest companies within Google and Microsoft basically fully realigning their approach to the market through shifting from mobile first to AI first. And AI is going to be, it's, the predictions are, 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 are incredibly uh, impressive. When you look at going from, what is it, a spend of 36 billion in 2020 to 127 billion by 2025. And there are three primary areas driving this quote unquote golden age of AI. It's the decreasing cost of GPUs, which are essentially graphical processing units, which can drive parallel computing. It's this explosion of structured and unstructured data. Data is the fuel for artificial intelligence. So all of these systems that we're creating, you look at the data that's been created in the last two years is more than, than from the beginning of time. So you look at this massive, massive creation of both unstructured and structured data, or data of culture and data of identity, and you now have this, uh, the, this new way in which to train either through human interactive models or through deep learning models, which I'll touch on in just a minute. And you've got an advancement in terms of algorithms as well. So, and there's also essentially three types of AI. So there's artificial narrow intelligence that can focus on one specific task. You can think of say like AlphaGo. You start thinking about this idea of an artificial general intelligence which you start thinking uh, that may come online somewhere in the mid 2020s. And then obviously what a lot of people think about when they hear the word of, of artificial intelligence, they start thinking back to entertainment experiences and this idea of a super intelligence like Ultron from the Avengers or Skynet from the Terminator series, you know, more of a hive mind type of structure. But the reality is what we're looking at today is it's all about how can we take and use machine learning and deep learning to enhance business and to connect with consumers. 
So machine learning is obviously the first and probably most well-known layer right now. You're seeing a lot of discussions around it. It basically uses human-coded algorithms to parse data. It can learn, make predictions about specific use cases. And how many of you are experimenting with machine learning right now? Yep, okay. Machine learning algorithms are really capable of deriving preference as well as from past behavior. And you can compare them with the models of other people's desires. So it's a great way to analyze large amounts of unstructured data. And there are about 15 different, different techniques you can do this from association rule learning to decision trees to one of my favorites, random forest. So this is a current, uh, this is what I've been experimenting with for the last 24 months, is using machine learning and natural language processing to actually drive analysis of unstructured data to, to map themes and occasions across categories for the purpose of unlocking kind of creativity and supporting our creative team as well as our brand partners. You also look at the role that machine learning plays from a digital transformation standpoint. Again, digital transformation efforts are one of the fastest forms of adoption, specifically of AI, because we can drive different types of organizational efficiencies through automation of highly repetitive tasks. So machine learning libraries can be applied to repetitive tasks in the back and middle office. Now deep learning on the other side of things is really all about neural networks that are modeled off of the human brain. So deep learning uses kind of this multi-layer data structure and algorithms that are modeled off the human brain. And it's essentially supposed to be able to take data and it drives its approach to learning and prediction. And it doesn't necessarily require the data to be weighted like within machine learning. So this is where you can really create scale. So this is where you're seeing, uh, you're seeing Google experimenting with deep learning tied to its impact to search and SEO. Previously, Google search results were all based on algorithms that were defined by this strict set of rules, and SEO was based on regression models. Now you have 15% of Google's daily queries are touched by deep learning technology. So when I think about, when I think about the role of marketing through all of this, I, you know, for the last 15 years, I have taught a number of courses, and right now I'm teaching a course at SMU in Dallas tied to advertising campaigns. Everything has been based on this idea of the four Ps. You think about, you think about product, you think about price, you think about place and promotion. But what I'm actually seeing, I'm seeing the rise of potentially the new four Ps that are going to be impacted by artificial intelligence. And that's essentially psychographics, predictive, proxy, and pervasive. Because we're, we're quickly reaching a point where we're going to be advertising to algorithms in addition to people. And I call this system-based marketing. So the first step in the new four Ps is all around psychographic modeling. And this is really taking unstructured data and going past traditional demographics to really align to different psychographic models. Uh, the one that I'm using here is the ocean model, for example. But the key point here is to really make a links, links between affinities. And this is gonna be a foundational element of marketing moving forward because it's the merging and melding of structured and unstructured data, which is incredibly key. And that's where both machine learning and deep learning systems can help drive uh, this linking of affinities as another way in which we can, we can effectively market through algorithms in addition to people. The second is really tied to predictive APIs. This to me is the most critical in advancing adoption of intelligent systems. Without viable predictive capabilities, it's gonna limit the value over time. So we're gonna to continue to see a rise in terms of predictive APIs uh, that are gonna be available right now. So we can learn different behaviors, we can, uh, we can drive different forms of, of predictive modeling. So essentially, Essentially, this is an incredibly uh, key area of focus for the advancement of, of artificial intelligence and intelligent systems. One of the core things that was really interesting out of my research is that it actually showed that Gen X and boomers are the most interested in having virtual assistants predict their future needs or learn their behavioral patterns and become more integrated with the other applications. And that really surprised me. My expectation was obviously Gen Z and millennial here, but it was actually the inverse. So there's opportunities here for especially uh, financial services types of organizations to really step in and use predictive models and predictive APIs to drive more value through virtual assistants through extremely affluent uh, uh, gr uh, groups. So the next area is really tied to this idea of the proxy web. And I teased this earlier with the idea of having assistants 
that essentially are becoming proxies to where they take on certain interactions of our daily lives and to where soon we'll have bots that are agents on our behalf. So essentially now we've had this foundation of psychographics, we have these predictive models, we have these real-time APIs, and we're going to see this rise of virtual assistants that are essentially going to be offloading our everyday functions to become these agents and our proxies. And what's really interesting is this is a real key foundational area of evolving from consumer-based journeys to what I'm calling system-based journeys. Now our research was interesting here. So what ended up happening is when it comes to when it comes to this idea of the proxy web you look across the generational cohorts and there's a little bit of apprehension in terms of trusting these systems but there's there's they're not surprised that this capability is available so what that tells me is that the virtual assistants will have to continue to drive real more contextual value beyond what it is today in order to truly reach this point in time over the course of the next few years. But with the advancement of predictive APIs, it's going to become more of a reality. And finally, when you move into the, the idea of these kind of algorithms and proxies, we're going to ultimately reach a state where all of these systems are ubiquitous and pervasive. And it's going to provide this shift towards multimodal interactions. So touch, voice, vision-based experiences, virtual assistants being a core driver, interconnected with millions of other sensors. You're going to see the rise of 5G connectivity that's going to impact everything from autonomous cars to how we interact with each other on a daily basis. So you think about the impact of reimagining marketing moving forward into the next three to five years. It moves well beyond the traditional area of product price place promotion and start really taking into consideration new forms of data such as psychographic data, new forms of predictive APIs that can really drive the, the aggregation of services, new forms of proxies and agents that are going to be working in our behalf so that we can continue to navigate our environments and ultimately working through pervasive environments. All of this leading to this idea of the creation of system-based marketing to where it's not just about marketing to an individual, but also through systems. This is going to have a profound impact on mobile as well. So to date, a, a large majority of focus has really been around a mobile first approach. We're just now seeing you know, massive, massive dollars from a media perspective begin realigning with mobile, even though the behavior has been primarily here over the past few years. But also mobile is ripe for disruption you think about the mobile user experience hasn't effectively changed since 2008. So from an Apple perspective, the introduction of the native application UX is still incredibly viable. We have hundreds of applications on our phone, but the reality is we only use a small portion of those applications. What's going to end up happening is with the rapid adoption of AI, the rise of the proxy web, we're soon going to begin to see a shift towards bundling of services versus standalone native applications. This will mean that the most of the utility services that we engage and interact with today will become more of a middle tier uh, layer of services. So instead of a brand having a native application, they would exist very similar to how you see Google Actions being deployed within virtual assistants. It's basically, it's basically creating these small experiences within this larger ecosystem. And you're seeing this right now with Google and the development of their, their experimental Fuchsia operating system. It's a card-based approach, and it basically has an ask-for-anything type of foundational function to where it'll actually aggregate in different services to drive whatever our needs and desires are. And what that ultimately means is as we think about the evolution towards multimodal interfaces, we think about the role of the mobile device, it's gonna significantly evolve as the environment becomes more intelligent. Well, that's it for the enhanced section. I'm Tom Edwards. You can follow me at Twitter at Blackfin360. Have a great day.